Hello everyone and welcome to uh, the Football Attics video blog number seven. Uh, I'm Chris Oakley, back with you once again for another uh, show and tell of sorts. Uh, and ordinarily, what would happen uh, with these video blogs is that I would plunder uh, my collection of football memorabilia, uh, mementos and thus like, uh, just to find something that I can talk to you about for a short while uh, because football nostalgia is what we're all about uh, on the football attic. Uh, what I've got for you on this occasion is something which is actually personal nostalgia, actually. Uh, it is also football nostalgia of sorts. Uh, I just thought I'd um, show you this uh, particular item today just because I thought it would be fun. It's something that I keep stumbling upon when I'm kind of rooting around in the garage and going through all my old stuff. Um, essentially, it's a folder. This is the folder. I know that probably it means nothing to you. You've never seen this before, but um, as you may be able to tell on the bottom, it says here, football kit designs and a very arty kind of logo here, which is based on my initials, CDO. And um, essentially this folder contains, not surprisingly, football kit designs, uh, but more importantly, football kit designs uh, that I created back in uh, around 1996, believe it or not. Uh, I was probably in my early to mid uh, 20s, I suppose, at the time, because these were done in the early to mid 90s. And um, basically they were done at a time in my life when I had very little else to do in my spare time. Um, I was certainly into my football back then. And uh, using nothing more than some paper um, and some felt tip pens, uh, pencils sometimes, even watercolour paints on one occasion, uh, I basically just let my creativity and my imagination run wild uh, by designing football kits, mostly for uh, teams that were in the Premier League at the time. Now, I'm sure this is something that um, some of you watching now will have done uh, back in your own younger days, uh, back in the dim and distant past. Um, essentially, this was just nothing more than uh, emptying my head of uh, ideas for things that I thought would make for decent, modern football kit designs. They were not created with a view to sending them off to Adidas or Umbro or Nike or anybody else for that matter. They were just done for my own personal satisfaction, something to do, um, and uh, uh, were a creative outlet for me, really. Um, now, I'm going to be showing you all the designs in this folder in just a moment. We'll do a bit of a slideshow and we'll rattle through the many pages that are in here. I didn't actually realise how many uh, I'd got in this folder until I had to start scanning them in for the little slideshow that you're going to be seeing shortly. But um, there are qu quite a few in there. Uh, a few things to make clear right from the off. First of all, I'm not showing you these as if to say I was a creative graphic design genius back in the day or anything like that. Um, I'm not up myself as if to say you know, I'm a brilliant designer and used to be back in the early to mid 90s. Um, many of these designs that you're going to see are a bit ropey. Some are okay. Some of them you might kind of go, ooh, that's not bad. So that's kind of the level we're operating at here. I'm not kind of trying to suggest to you that I was a sort of amazing uh, talent back in the day for when it comes to sort of graphic design or anything like that. It's just a curiosity piece, okay? Because whenever I do find this in the garage, I in, in, yeah, instinctively just start thumbing through the pages. And... If nothing else, they give you a snapshot of the kind of designs that were around at the time, i.e., you know, back in the in the mid-90s, a lot of the football kit designs were a bit more, shall we say, ostentatious in their design than they are now. I think, personally, uh, a lot of football kit designs that you see nowadays tend to veer towards a safe, simple, sort of modern take on traditional type. Nothing too wayward or wacky. It's just a bit safe and smart and fine. Yeah, that's all fine. But I do miss the days when football kit designers were allowed to uh, add a flourish here and there, something a little bit bizarre. Um, maybe those days will come back. Who knows? I, I sincerely hope so. But, but if you look at my designs in this folder, they kind of uh, are influenced, shall we say, by that approach to football kit design, which was much more prevalent back in the, uh, in the mid-90s than it is now. So... That's the context that we're going to sit it in, really. Um, other than that, uh, well, basically, there's um, um, a lot of the designs uh, are in sets. Now, there's one big set, which we'll start off in just a moment. Um, but the, the designs were done at different points in time, and they had different sort of themes, and a different approach was taken by me at, uh, in each case. The one thing you'll see um, as a sort of background thing, really, is that as you will know, if you've ever tried to design football kits using just a pen and a bit of paper, uh, you know you have to basically keep drawing the outline of the player every or the kit every time you want to, um, yeah, before you start 
doing any kind of creative designing. And that bit is very tedious um, and very repetitive. And you just want to get on with, you know, colouring the kit in and actually creating your design rather than just tracing around a player or whatever. Um, so very early on, I latched onto this fact and, and did the, the decent thing, which was to design uh, a template and then just photocopy the pages every time. That's why a lot of them look very similar to each other. Um, so there's that. The other thing to mention as well that is that this was uh, this folder in a very slight sort of way was uh, used as the basis for a uh, blog article that I wrote. Oh, I should have checked this before I started actually, but it was way back in about 2012 on thefootballattic.com. You can find it there. Uh, it's called I Was a Teenage Kit Designer. And that was when I first sort of mentioned some of these designs. In fact, I, I scanned in and included a few of these designs in that blog post. And it went down really well, I think, uh, chimed with a few of you maybe that are watching now because um, it's something that many of us have done back in the day, you know, just the, the simple pleasures of designing sort of fantasy football kits. Um, and um, this is a chance really for me to show you all of the designs that are in this folder. Miraculously, they've uh, remained in my collection because I've been fairly, uh, well, I'm a bit ashamed to sort of say, but back in the day, I used to throw things away when I felt that I didn't need them anymore all too quickly. Uh, prime example being my um, my exercise books from when I was at junior school, uh, from the age of when I was about 11, or 10 or 11. When I got to the age of about 16, I thought, what am I hanging on to these books for? There's no value, there's nothing, there's no content to these books uh, that's of any use to me. I might as well throw them away. Well, what an idiot I was uh, in doing that. If only I still had them, because I'd be able to get an insight into the way my brain worked when I was that young. But luckily, this folder has stood the test of time and it is now finally my pleasure to show you uh, the, the designs that are in them. So let's do that now, shall we? Here we go. So here we are then, and uh, we start off with the first set, which is by far the biggest set of designs uh, in my folder. And as you can see by the letters JVC across the middle of all of these uh, three shirts, uh, we start off with some kits that I designed uh, for Arsenal. Now, I know already they look a bit kind of weird and wacky, I know, and this is kind of what you can expect um, you know, through the rest of this collection, frankly. So uh, strap yourselves in, that's what you've got in store. Um, and. What can I say about these ones? Well, as you can see, we've got a home, away, and third kit, which is the case for all of the uh, the kits in this set. Um, are they any good? Mm, well, not especially. Um, I suppose the, uh, the the first kit, the home kit, is the weakest one of these three. Um, the slight sort of thunder uh, motif on the second one in yellow and blue is a bit um, bit too out there for my liking, I suppose. But um, but the contrast of colours works well. And then white and green on the third kit. I did that, I think, like a lot of these third kits. I was just desperate to try and come up with something um, that maybe a colour scheme that hadn't been used for that team on, say, an away kit or a third kit before. Uh, and so that's why I used white and green with black trim on that third kit. Does it work? Um, almost. I think like a lot of the designs you're about to see, they're kind of not far off being actual okay designs if I say so myself they just need a little bit more finesse a little bit of polish just to kind of make them look believable who knows maybe one day I'll re revisit all these designs and actually redraw them but make them look a lot better but the the main priority uh, as I may have said in the introduction it was just to kind of get the ideas out of my head and onto paper just so I could see what they look like so if they look a bit rough and ready that's the reason why um, yeah um, okay, not a bad opening, shall we say, to start off with there, for the Arsenal. Uh, we move on um, to Aston Villa. Thing to note with these, uh, as you can probably already see, is that I didn't, in my felt tip pen collection, I didn't have the exact colours all the time. Uh, therefore, I didn't have a claret coloured pen. I didn't even have a sky blue coloured pen. So what I had to use was this sort of dark cerise and a slightly turquoisey shade of blue. Um, as for the kit designs themselves, a lot of stripes going on there, as you can see across the bottom of the uh, shorts and the top of the socks and the insides of the sleeves, sort of under the arms there, but all in all, not too bad. Again, just a bit of polish required and they may look okay. I think, the, again, the third kit is probably the strongest of the, th of the three. Um, so those are the Aston Villa kits. Um, moving on to a couple here that I did. I just did one kit for, um, and I'm going to upset people now by saying this, but what I would have felt at the time were the weaker teams of the Premier League at the time, Barnsley and Bolton. Um, needless to say, um, my, my view of both teams has uh, improved considerably since then, but only one kit for those two teams. 
the Barnsley one, because um, Barnsley were in the Premier League, by the way, back in whenever it was, 95, 96-ish sort of time. Um, Barnsley one's not too bad, but the sort of sharp points on the sleeves are a little bit too severe, maybe. The Bolton kit, I'm actually quite fond of. I'm quite pleased with that, and I think it's definitely kind of within the realms of believability for the sort of thing that Reebok uh, would have designed back then and, and thereafter as well. They were quite renowned for some of their wacky designs. Um, so I, I quite like the Bolton one out of those. Uh, moving on, we have Blackburn Rovers. And, um, yeah... Um, for some reason, like, as with the Arsenal home kit that I showed you a moment ago, I sort of was going for this slightly pointy motif going on on the sleeves. I'm not sure what that's all about, but I suppose it was different from anything that Blackburn had had before at that point, and maybe since as well. Um, in, on, on this occasion, I'm quite pleased with the second and third kits. And again, the third kit, I, I quite like the, the white with orange and black uh, sort of approach there. That's quite nice. And the slope uh, on the second kit there, black and red, I think also works well. Um, uh, discuss is all I can say. Now we come on to Chelsea. Now, now these are very weak. In fact, so weak that I can barely sort of ponder on them for more than a few moments. But um, inspiration was lacking on all three of these. I was trying to kind of come up with white and green. I think white and green would work on an, on a Chelsea away kit, but just not the way I've drawn it there. And I was trying to come up with some kind of shadowy sort of complex pattern thing going on with the yellow third strip, but it just didn't happen for me. So sorry, Chelsea fans, you're probably waiting to see what I come up with uh, for your team. And frankly, I think uh, my creative schools were missing on that particular day. So let's move on, shall we? We go on to uh, Coventry City. Uh, again, I didn't have a sky blue pen. Sorry, Coventry fans. Uh, here you can see I was going with a kind of curved panel kind of motif with a sort of stitching effect on the inner edge. Um, probably go for the third kit on this one as well although I think all three are okay without being brilliant uh, white and mauve on the away kit mm, with, a, with a touch of this strange sort of turquoise colour mm, not sure um, but they're okay again they need a bit of finesse to make them look particularly good and the right colours as well Derby County who were in the top flight back at the time now I quite like these again the points the, the, the sort of uh, sharp tips of those triangles Looks a little bit severe, but I think it sort of works. They just need to be toned down a bit, maybe. But um, the colour uh, scheme on all three, I think, works pretty well. And I'm, I know this is a, a, a bit of a pattern emerging here, but I, I would have to go with the third kit again, actually. Although not by much. I, I quite like all three of those as a set. Next, we've got uh, Everton. These aren't too bad. Um, basically, what I was going with there, you can see, particularly on the middle kit there, is a sort of... Uh, motif of having a top panel, a horizontal panel, uh, another one at the bottom of the shirt, and then the same sort of down the sides of the kit well, uh, as well. Um, I quite like the home and away kits. I think they work. Uh, the third kit using white and light blue, not entirely sure, but better than some kits probably that I've seen designed uh, ever since uh, then and, um, and that have actually gone into production, dare I say. There's, there's controversy for you. Moving on to uh, Leeds United. Um, I think the third kit works best out of these three as well. Um, not that the other two are too bad. Uh, they could be better though. Um, but I quite like the sort of horizontal and vertical bars on the third one. Uh, so that's Leeds United. Leicester City. I had um, a couple of attempts here at Leicester City. Here's the first set. Um, not particularly fond of these, but I was going with a sort of um, a, a, an angular panel coming in from the sides as you can see and on the third kit well in, on this occasion I think the third kit is the worst rather than the best on the next set um, something a little bit more um, appealing shall we say in terms of quality although I'm not a great fan of the uh, the sort of braces effect coming in sort of across the shoulders on the first two kits I think the third one works best but then that's a bit like the Everton ones you saw a moment ago so not my greatest designs there for Leicester fans sorry now, Liverpool. Liverpool Man U I did the most designs for. Now, here's four for Liverpool. Um, now, what you may or may not be able to make out on the kit on the right is that I was trying to work in this kind of complex shadow pattern, which was a series of kind of square, almost sort of like a Greek style, sort of square, angular, like a snake pattern almost, going around the tops of the shoulders and also at the top right-hand corner of the shorts as well. Um, 
had I designed it better, I think it would have looked even better than it does there. But I think it, actually as, a, as an idea, I think that could be the basis for something quite interesting. And um, I, I'm, it's one of those things where I sort of think, I'm sure by this stage a, a, a manufacturer would have done something like that but haven't. Maybe because it's rubbish, I don't know. But um, I quite like the one on the right. The ones on the on the left, the, the two on the left there, okay, nothing special. Purple with white and black, nah, maybe not, A. Eh? And so, on to Manchester United. Now here I've got quite a few to go through. So here's the first set of four. Um, not bad, a uh, bit of tweaking, they could be okay. Uh, I'm not sure about blue and orange on the away kit, but white and black I think works. Uh, the blue one on the right is very out there and wacky and um, I don't think it would ever ever be considered uh, as an away kit design even if it was tweaked frankly but on the next set here of three um, trying different things out with the home kit the middle one uh, the shirt I'm quite sort of pleased with it I sort of tried to do a, a faded kind of almost like a triple ribbon effect on the shirt not sure about the ribbon ends on the shorts but um, but the shirt is okay the, the, the first one on the left, nah, that just isn't happening for me. And on the right, I was going for a, a sort of almost a Pete Mondrian style kind of thing going on there with, with blocks of colour, squares and rectangles and stripes and things. And um, yeah, I think that's not too bad. Could be could be better if worked on a bit. Yeah, why not? Newcastle, Newcastle United now, sorry, get my words out. You can see I was very heavily influenced by the uh, Adidas kit of the era, the one with the granddad collar. Um, although my version has got a, co a collar where you might be able to see it's got a kind of notch cut out of it. And um, that's the main selling point of that one, creativity wise. Um, but nothing else much really to, to write home about there. White and mauve or you know, light purple, call it what you will. Uh, nothing special about that. And I'm not sure the color scheme works. Green, white, and black. Mm. I, I think it could have been better if it was drawn better, but it was drawn pretty poorly, as you can see. We move on to Sheffield Wednesday now. Um, home kit, mm, not sure that's anything fantastic. The away kit with yellow, red, and black. Shades of Watford, you might say. Um, not brilliant. My favorite on this one is the third kit, uh, using a sort of zigzag kind of pattern, and also a few checker uh, effects, uh, particularly on the on the top of the socks there. I think that works okay. And moving on to Southampton, well here you can see I was influenced by the classic uh, design that uh, Southampton had back in the early 80s that was worn by people like Kevin Keegan. Um, I quite like the originality of the collar. I'm not sure what it's about. It's kind of like got a solid uh, round neck and then a sort of extra curve below it. Uh, but I think, I think that's alright. It's not too bad. The away kit a bit too black possibly uh, and the third kit on the right hand side there I think is okay I think that could work as a sort of um, continuing theme from the the one on the left so you know not bad that if I do say so myself on to Tottenham and again like Chelsea I think my inspiration was was not there that day I was trying to create this kind of Argyle sweater effect you know with di is it Argyle or is it a yeah, it's not Paisley, is it? It's Argyle sweater with the sort of diamond motif that you used to get on the old uh, the old jumpers there. Um, that's kind of what I was trying to design. It didn't work. The curves on the yellow away kit, I can't say I'm fond of. And as for the orange one on the right, well, I think inspiration was definitely lacking on that day. On to West Ham now, my team. And um, if this picture looks a little bit light, it's because when I tried to adjust the contrast on this, it came out very dark. I couldn't quite get the right balance, but if nothing else, I'm just trying to highlight the fact here that um, I didn't have a claret colored pen. I had a slightly sort of dark pinkish sort of pen, which didn't work. Um, home kit, if you make the leap of imagination as to what the, the proper claret color should be, okay, but nothing brilliant. The stripy away kit in the middle there, pfft, a bit, um, bit too garish for my liking. And the third one on the right, in which I tried to bring in a sort of yellowy colour. Nah, wasn't happening that one. I'd probably go for the home kit out of those three. Wimbledon, remember those? Yes, Wimbledon FC. Um, I quite like the home kit I've done there. A sort of varying striped width uh, pattern going on there. All right, and it works as white and red as well. As for the third kit on the right, a sort of black pinstripe with a strange 
rectangular green pattern coming in from the top right hand corner, well, yeah, if it was drawn better, it might get commissioned, but probably wouldn't. Uh, now we come on to the England kits. Now, I've, as you see, I've sort of done a few England kits here. Um, the middle one I sort of gave up on, it just didn't seem to be going anywhere. The one on the left, to my mind, doesn't sort of scream of anything particularly special. And the one on the right, um, as you can see, I was trying to work in a kind of E motif, E for England, uh, but not so good really. Um, yeah, maybe the, the original idea was better than what actually materialised in the end. So anyway, so those are a few England kits. Using the same template, I also designed a few generic kits as well, um, for no particular team. Uh, I think the one I'm most fondest of is the one on the left with the black and blue stripes across the shoulders. I think that works quite well. The one in the middle, sort of subtle and understated. Who knows, that could work. And the one on the right just isn't happening for me. Uh, sorry, but I'm out, as they used to say on Dragon's Den. We now move on to the next set. Um, you can see here um, a different template, uh, which I sort of hand drew and then photocopied. Um, again, no particular teams here, just working with colors and ideas. Um, the one on the left I quite like, using sort of four stripes. It's sort of like a cross between the old Aberdeen kit uh, of the late 70s and Adidas. Um, only this one's got four stripes rather than three. Just a few sort of sets of stripes placed here and there on the sleeves and down the shirt and down the shorts and, and on the socks. The one in the middle, I return to this kind of strange sort of square Greek style motif, but it's a bit busy, um, but could work if polished a bit. And the one on the right, I thought it'd be interesting to try and do a black and white shirt that wasn't stripes a la Newcastle. Um, it's a bit busy, but um, in some ways I kind of quite like what I've done there. Um, needs to be needs to be improved like a lot of my designs you, you're spotting the theme that's occurring here and the next set well the one on the left is sort of a cross between Arsenal and PSV Eindhoven I suppose you could say like a curved solid panel uh, across the right hand sleeve and the top of the shirt and then stripes elsewhere um, not too bad that I think the one in the middle I quite like as well as far as green and white stripes is concerned or hoops I should say uh, rather than going with the, the, the traditional kind of straight edged hoops. I thought I'd try curvy lines, wavy lines, um, with a sort of uh, thin stripe pattern going on in, in the actual green hoops themselves. That looks quite nice. The one on the right, not so good. I used colored pencils on that one, as you can see. Uh, it needs some work, enough said. Now we come on to the next set. Now, with the, with these ones you're seeing here, um, what I was trying to do is design uh, football kits that could be used in a catalogue um, because once upon a time going back probably to about the late 80s I happened to meet through some route or other I can't remember now a guy who actually created um, the sort of sportswear that you would see being sold on a market stall let's put it that way um, you know sweatshirts uh, woolly hats scarves caps that sort of thing but they would be um, for the main teams, the big teams like Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool, and also local teams in London where I'm from, so the likes of Tottenham and West Ham, Chelsea. But the thing is, of course, he couldn't actually use, say, Manchester United, so he'd have to put a word like United on there that he couldn't get done for, for copyright. Um, but anyway, he sort of created a catalogue for his small company that created all this stuff. And I thought, well, you know, there are Sunday league teams that uh, and, and local sort of teams that get their kit from smaller uh, kit manufacturers, let's say. And so what would they have in their catalogues? They would have generic designs where you can kind of mix and match certain um, styles. In this case, you've got, um, you know, shorts uh, with a sort of simple stripe across the bottom. And then you can sort of mix and match the shirts and the shorts and the socks. Um, so I thought, well, if I was creating a catalogue like that, what generic kit designs would I create? And here's the first one. They've all got strange sort of names. This one's Novara. I think some of these names I actually got from an atlas because I was looking to see if there were place names with strange strange names that I could use. I'm not sure if Novara is an actual place or not, but anyway. But as far as this design is concerned, a kind of um, V um, 
motif here where the V's are sort of passing each other, shall we say. Quite nice in the red and blue on white. But as you can see on the page on the right, um, also uh, it works well in say yellow and navy or uh, purple and white. You know, there you go. Um, and there's a few of these. We move on. The next one's Akita. <laughs> where did I get these names from? Um, now, this, as you can see, was heavily influenced, I suppose, by the Adidas kits from the early 90s that had three bold Adidas stripes coming over the shoulder, uh, particularly uh, memorable uh, in the Liverpool kit of the early 90s. This sort of works on the same theme. So three big stripes coming in from the right. Um, they're, again, drawn in a very rough and ready sort of fashion really, um, not very polished, but you get the idea. And it was just a, an opportunity to see how well these things worked in different colour schemes more than anything else. Torneo, anagram of Torino, I fancy. Um, uh, as you can see, this kind of had thinner, sort of almost candy stripes going across there, flappy, flappy collar uh, on the shirt. Um, and as you can see also on these page layouts, you can see where I was, um, Spe specifying the name that I'd given to each style of socks, shorts, and so on. So in this case, um, uh, the big picture on the left, the shorts were uh, called Wembley, i.e. they had a sort of uh, like a, a stripe across the bottom, and the socks that had stripes running down the, the, the turnovers at the top were called um, Pelota. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure either, but um, anyway, there you go, three different colorways in that particular design. And then we come on to Baliza, uh, sort of a you know, diagonal sash, as you can see. Um, quite like the, the shorts that I've done for this one, and the socks that, that were both called Festival, uh, like a running uh, tape of squares going down the sides of the shorts and across the top of the socks. They look quite good, I think. And I quite like the collar as well on the shirt, just for what it's worth. Sintra is the next one. Don't laugh. Um, so this is just a hooped design really, nothing particularly extravagant about that. A sort of simple basic design for a Sunday League team. Texel, uh, well that's your sort of Ajax design I suppose, uh, in different colours. Um, again, nothing special, nothing specially uh, wonderful about that. Calyx, no, no me neither. Um, uh, this is a sort of contrasting colour between the sleeves and the body of the shirt really. Um, fairly standard stuff. Tivoli. Now this one is very heavily influenced by the uh, Leeds kit that uh, I suppose many of us associate with the great Tony Yeboah. Uh, they did, I think, for maybe one or two seasons just have a plain white kit with no stripes, no nothing, which I thought was beautiful. I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful kit back then. Um, and so I thought I'd do something similar. similar. A plain shirt, plain shorts, plain socks, no adornments other than you know, the manufacturer logo or the sponsor, and that's about it really, but um, quite nice, all the same. Girona, well, that's just striped shirts really, that's the, the main sort of USP of that one. And now we come on to another set. Now this is just a sort of standard um, player standing with arms folded behind the back motif. Now, the thing you have to know about this one is that once upon a time, back in the mid to late 80s, my friend Martin and I, we had this idea, it didn't get very far, needless to say, of creating some kind of play-by-mail game. Remember those kids? Ask your parents uh, before the internet came along. One of these kind of systems where you, you uh, send off uh, to uh, take part in some kind of league and then you get sent regular updates through the post and you pick a team and then you play matches and you play certain formations and you have to send back how you want to configure your team. Blimey, that's, there's something to write a blog post about. Well, we were thinking of doing one of these. God knows how we were going to do it, but it was an idea. But we were going to have teams based on generic cities around the world. Not, you know, Manchester United, you know, um, God, I'm trying to think of, you know, Santos and Flamengo or anything like that. Not established teams around the world. We were going to have cities, generic cities. And so we started designing kits for those cities. And out of these four that have survived, and there were many actually, uh, most of which did probably end up in the bin, I quite like the two on the right. Um, the Tokyo one I'm particularly fond of, that's a bit wacky and, and kind of like a complicated design, really using black bars and a sort of faded red pattern, which is difficult to do with felt tip pens, but um, 
I quite like that one, and I quite like the Auckland one on the right, which is in pale blue with this, as uh, you can see, almost like a bar graph effect, and um, uh, black shaded panels here and there. Those are quite good designs, I thought. No, that's just me and my opinion. And so on to another set. This is just a, a miscellaneous set, really. We begin with Blackburn Rovers, a uh, quick and dirty sort of thing done with felt-tip pens. As you can see, a checkerboard effect there, which I think could work if drawn properly. Leeds United. This was done, done on a computer, believe it or not. Um, I can't remember if it would have been done on a PC or maybe my Commodore Amiga from back in the day. Um, but it's a fairly basic sort of design with crossover stripes in yellow and blue, which I quite like. Not sure it would be commissioned in this day and age, but um, I like it all the same for its simplicity. Liverpool second kit. Now look at this. Um, I don't know why, but it vaguely reminds me of some kind of uniform that might be worn in McDonald's by the staff that work there. I don't know why, maybe it's the colour scheme, but fundamentally, um, uh, yellow and white hoops. Uh, the yellow hoops are flanked in a sort of thinner red stripe, as you can see. Uh, looks like the shorts have got a yellow stripe on them as well, which is probably ill-advised, but um, not a bad look, that one, I thought. Not bad. Uh, an Arsenal kit of sorts. Um, yeah, as you can see, these didn't have a photocopied template. These were just hand-drawn every time. Um, I tried to do a sort of gradation between the red, the solid red of the body of the shirt and the white sleeves, but didn't really work out, as you can see. Here's an away kit based on the same sort of thing. Here are two designs that are using the same template and um, we come back once again to that square, slightly Greek styled uh, motif, which I'm sure we'll see its, uh, its day in the sun at some point. There will be a, a football kit, an established football kit manufacturer that will take this one on and uh, maybe turn it into reality um, in terms of the, 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 the Greek design. Uh, whether it will look anything like these two, I don't know, but they're all right. I quite like the one on the right, particularly in white and blue. And um, finally, two designs done using watercolour paints, would you believe? Now, the reason I did, um, did these in watercolours is just because you can get colour down onto the page and, in quotes, colour in the shirts and stuff very quickly. Of course, you just, you know, wash it in very quickly. No fiddling around with, you know, cross-hatching with pencils or anything like that. Um, we're back to that three-bar design that we saw earlier on and... Um, yeah, I'm not sure if Ipswich ever had a kit like this, but I can sort of believe that they did. Um, it's it's all right, but it's a bit bit out there. And finally, we come on to what you might call a decent Chelsea uh, kit design, because there weren't any earlier on. Um, albeit this one is, you might say, a bit influenced by Bordeaux, with that uh, big V uh, running down towards the bottom with a horizontal stripe, and um, you know other wide stripes cutting in across the the bottom of the shorts and the top of the socks. You can see I went really to town on this one, actually even doing some kind of vague crowd design and, and uh, coloured in the pitch and the sky and everything. Um, uh, not that that really improves things much, but um, you can see I was in an artistic frame of mind back then uh, when I did that one. Um, so there we go. So that finally is the last of my designs in my folder. Yes, uh, there it is. That's all of the designs in my folder here. Um, as you can see, quite a few of them. And uh, sorry it went on a bit long, but I just thought you might be interested in uh, seeing the sort of uh, things that I was uh, designing back in the early to mid 90s. Um, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts, just to see what your comments are and see whether you think any of them may well have stood a vague chance of being put into production. I suspect they probably wouldn't have been, but, um, but there it is. One last thing just to mention, the other, the other thing that was in the folder is there was this sheet. Now, I'm not quite sure if you can sort of see this too well, um, but basically I was talking about the catalogue there that I was kind of, I wasn't even really thinking of making a catalogue, but I thought if I did, um, I need to kind of establish the styles, the individual styles for the, uh, the collars on the shirts, the shorts and the socks. And um, that's what we've got here. We've got um, the Girona one here with a sort of stripe across the side of the collar and across the bottom. Uh, you've got um, Sintra, which had a sort of granddad collar. Baliza with that sort of curved V-neck collar. And then we've got the shorts with uh, Wembley here with the stripe across the bottom. Uh, Festival with the squares along the sides. And then all the um, all the socks as well, and that was my like my kind of crib sheet. That was my um, cheat sheet, so that I knew uh, what the names of each style were to put on the uh, on the pages that you saw. Anyway, so that's the only other thing. 
Ah, right, so that's that. Um, that's uh, video blog seven. Um, uh, hope you uh, like that. If you're into football kit design, then you may possibly have liked that. Um, if you are into football kit design, then thefootballattic.com is the place to go because um, at the time we're recording this, at the time I'm recording this, uh, which is sort of mid-May 2015, um, over the next month or so, you'll probably be seeing quite a few things appearing on the website uh, which relate to football kit design. Uh, as well as this video blog, there's other stuff that I can't tell you about because it's very secret, uh, but uh, you'll find all, find out all about it in the fullness of time. And if you're watching this video in 2016, uh, then you'll know all about it anyway. But um, football kit design, uh, we've got a bit of a season coming up of that on the footballattic.com. Uh, that's it for the time being. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, don't forget to visit thefootballattic.com for all your football nostalgia needs. Uh, but until the next video blog from me, Chris Oakley, it's goodbye.